Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Mrosiak, and welcome to this inaugural episode of Junior Sabres Journal, the podcast. Perhaps in past years, you've come across our video highlight segments known as Junior Sabres Journal. They ran for a couple of seasons at Buffalo Sabres home games during intermissions, and many episodes can still be found on YouTube. But this is a new direction in which we are taking the journal. This is not going to be like most podcasts where folks just sit and chat. This will be more like a radio news format. We'll have interviews with key Junior Sabres people, including coaches and players. But we'll also have news from throughout the Junior Sabres organization, not just our Junior A team, although that will be the primary focus of the series. And we'll bring you important news from elsewhere in the Ontario Junior Hockey League. And there's a lot of it as we head into a new season. So take a few moments, listen, and enjoy the show. Let's go! The Junior Sabres qualified for the 2018 playoffs but fell in the first round to the North York Rangers. The team secured college commitments for players including Ryan Sidorsky, Trevor Pekka, Zach Nazareth mid-season. Meanwhile, after the season, Christian DeFelice and Ethan Kerbis committed to programs. Preparations for the 2018-2019 OJHL season got underway with the Junior Sabres' main tryout camp in July at Harbor Center. And it was then and there we caught up with head coach Nick Tuzzolino, who along with his staff was watching the prospects. Fortunately, you know, we had a pretty strong season last year, in my opinion, and uh, we got the, the ability to bring back some of our core group, um, which is nice because, you know, we get to build around kind of the successful players we had last year, which was a different position from the season before, where we kind of had to go through a rebuild. Um, so by being able to kind of be a little bit more picky, we've been able to get some uh, different looks and some different high-end players in here to try and fill those holes. Are there particular veterans that you know for, for sure are coming back that uh, will, will help lead the team next season? Yeah, I mean, you know, right now, Adam Tredowitz, Matt Jakubowski, uh, uh, Anthony Hora, uh, Matt Stanek, those type of guys are 100% back. Um, you know, Tredowitz is a guy who's really devoted to this team and, you know, also helps us try recruiting in the offseason. Uh, being an older guy, he wants to build a team for, you know, himself and uh, everyone in the room. and. He does a good job of talking to players when we need him to, and he's just, you know, from all my veterans that really take a role in their own uh, ability to play out there. It's hard because on one hand, you want to bring back some of the veterans uh, and, and build a contender year after year, but by the same token, the junior hockey coach's job is to get them ready for that next level. You went through that yourself. So tell, tell me about that kind of that dilemma, but, but wanting to, to, to build a strong team, but also not wanting to be too selfish and, and, and give these kids their, their chance to move on when the time is right. Yeah, I mean, the people I mentioned, uh, you know, a month ago, I could have lost all of them. Um, they all attend USHL camps uh, because they're all that high-end type of player and can make one of those rosters uh, pretty much on a coin flip. So I was fortunate enough that they didn't. Um, but yes, I, we often push our players to try out in the USHL and take those chances because we do want to push them to that next level. And uh, for the most part, uh, our guys have had success, but when they don't, they know that they have a good place and a good home here, and uh, they usually come back. Among the returning players is Adam Tredowitz, who caught up with Junior Sabres Journal and discussed the season that was and the season that's coming. We started off slow, but we had a good run in the middle. We made some noise. I think we got a few teams worried about us, and obviously it didn't go well down the stretch, but I think it'll be a good learning experience for next, for next season. One of the teams you performed very well against uh, the past year was Georgetown, a team that's always been a perennial arch rival, and yet uh, the Junior Sabres not only held their own, but sent the message that they can run with the Raiders. Yeah, I mean, obviously a division rival. We play them every year. Uh, the years past, we struggled a little bit, but last year we took it to them a little, so I think it'll be a good stepping stone for next season. Oakville returns to the division as well. Do you see the overall division competition getting tougher? Yeah, I mean, every game's tough. Uh, there's not many like bottom feeders anymore, so I mean it'll be interesting to see how we can do next season. The team's preseason schedule begins with a home and home series starting Saturday, August 25th at Burlington against the Cougars. The puck drops at the Wave Twin Rinks around 4 p.m. Then on Sunday, August 26th, the teams come to Buffalo and a rematch at the Harbor Center beginning at 4.30 p.m. Admission to Buffalo Junior Sabres hockey is free, but a fee is required to park. The Junior Sabres wrap up their preseason schedule Thursday, August 30th, when they travel to the Wayne Gretzky Center at a 7.30 p.m. game against the Brantford 99ers. The 99ers are a familiar rival and a new home. That's just some of the plentiful news to come out of the league over the summer. More on that in a moment. But first, let's highlight some of the Junior Sabres' regular season schedule. 
Junior Sabres open their 2018-2019 campaign on the road at Burlington, Saturday, September 8th. They'll host their home opener on Wednesday, September 12th at Harbor Center against the St. Michael's Buzzers. Face-off is scheduled for 7.30 p.m. This season, the Junior Sabres are shifting more home games to Wednesday evenings, as Junior Sabres GM Charlie Mandola explains. Yeah, I mean, we have some really high-level hockey. In our league, we have uh, over 150 players that committed to college last year. So we have, uh, we also had five players that were drafted uh, in the NHL out of our league. So um, this is really good hockey, and it's a free event. There's no fee to come to our games, and we're going to be playing on Wednesday nights at 7.30 next year for the majority of the year. Um, and we're looking forward to showcasing our, our players and hopefully people come down and think it's a good product and want to come down in the future. There will still be some Sunday home dates as well, but the good news is for those who last year were torn between hockey and football, this season Sunday games will begin at 6.30 p.m. after Buffalo Bills games have ended, but early enough to bring the family downtown for some junior hockey before retiring to bed to start a new school week. You can find a link to the full OJHL schedule, including Buffalo's home games, at OJHL.ca. The Ontario Junior Hockey League Governor's Showcase will again be held in Buffalo at the Harbour Centre, as the OJHL's only U.S.-based team welcomes the entire league, along with a multitude of scouts from hockey's major junior, college and professional levels. The showplace takes place September 24th through the 26th, Buffalo will play St. Michael's Monday afternoon, September 24th at 3.15 p.m. on the KeyBank Feature Rink. They'll then face the Coburg Cougars in what will officially be a road game for the Junior Sabres, Tuesday, September 25th on Harbor Center's Rink 2. That will be an 8.30 p.m. start. Buffalo Junior Sabres regular season games will again be broadcast live and streaming video on the official network of the Ontario Junior Hockey League, Hockey TV. For more information, including subscription packages, visit HockeyTV.com. As we mentioned a moment ago, there was plenty of news throughout the OJHL during the summer months. The Buffalo Junior Sabres division, the OJHL West, saw the relocation of two rivals in the offseason. The former Orangeville Flyers have moved to Brampton and are now known as the Brampton Admirals. They'll play their home games in Memorial Arena, where many years ago the former Brampton Capitals competed in this league. Meanwhile, the boyhood home of the Great One, Wayne Gretzky, is now the home of the former Milton Icehawks, now known as the Brantford 99ers. They'll host games in the Wayne Gretzky Sports Center. The West Division is also one team bigger. The Oakville Blades, longtime rivals, have returned after spending a few seasons in the South Division. There are also some coaching changes among division rivals. The Georgetown Raiders named Scott McCrory their new head coach. McCrory moves in after the team said goodbye to Greg Walters, who was hired as the new head coach of the Ontario Hockey League's Oshawa Generals. The Burlington Cougars named Mark Juris their new head coach in the summer. Juris previously served as coach and GM of the Cougars in the 2009-2010 season. His OJHL experience also includes previous stops with the Oakville Blades and the former Markham Waxers franchise. The Cougars named Juris their new head coach just weeks after naming Chad Wiseman their new head coach, but Wiseman subsequently was offered an assistant coaching position with the OHL's Guelph Storm. Also in the division, Dan Fitzgerald has been named the new head coach of the Brantford 99ers. He replaces Mario Cicillo, who is the new bench boss of the Aurora Tigers. There was another OJHL coach plucked into the OHL in the offseason, this one from the South Division. John Dean, the league's coach of the year for the 2017-2018 season, left the Toronto Patriots to take the head coaching position with the OHL's Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. Patriots GM Mark Joslin has added the role of head coach to his duties since then. And another noteworthy opportunity for an assistant coach from a junior Sabres rival, Oakville assistant coach Garrett Rutledge was named an assistant coach with the OHL's Flint Firebirds. And another news note from the OJHL this summer, two players who skated in the past season are now NHL draft picks. Forward Jack McBain, who played with the Toronto Junior Canadiens last season, was selected by the Minnesota Wild in the third round of this year's NHL entry draft. He is slated to begin college hockey this fall with Boston College. And Dustin McFall, the defenseman for the Pickering Panthers, was chosen by the Boston Bruins in the seventh round. He is currently scheduled to begin his college hockey commitment to Clarkson in 2019. Congratulations to both players.
And thank you for listening to this first edition of the Junior Sabres Journal Podcast. In our next edition, we'll recap the Junior Sabres preseason and also highlight some of the big things that happened elsewhere within the Junior Sabres organization, including a national championship run by one of the youth divisions. Until then, I'm Michael Mrosiak. Thanks for listening. We'll see you at the rink.